Hello everyone, uh, we were discussing fin tube heat exchanger. In uh, last few lectures, we have seen how to calculate uh, the fin efficiency for fin tube heat exchanger, how to calculate different geometrical parameters, particularly area of uh, fin tube heat exchangers. And uh, uh, ultimately, we have calculated heat transfer coefficient for fin tube heat exchanger. Once again, I like to remind you for fin tube heat exchanger where fluid passes through the tube side and the gas passes over the fins surface of the tubes. Uh, the challenge lies in the designing of the fin side <coughs> that means the gas side of the heat exchangers. Both the heat transfer coefficient and the pressure drop that will depend on the geometry of the uh, fin surface tube arrangement, <coughs> tube layout, number of rows, number of columns uh, and obviously the physical dimensions uh, and uh, most of the cases these are correlations obtained from experiment. So, really we should not bother uh, to get them by heart, only thing is that a familiarity is needed. So, that is why uh, we will take up some problem or example. Uh, which are typical uh, um, um, example of fin tube heat exchanger. Uh, nothing has to be get by heart, only the um, method of solution or rather the logic we follow to solve them that has to be understood. So, that when another problem comes, we will be able to solve it. So, this is what I like to convey and uh, certain generality is there. So, those generalities I am pointing out as we proceed with this course. So, <coughs> uh, so uh, analysis of fin tube heat exchanger continued, uh, we will continue with uh, this thing and uh, let us uh, go to the next slide. So, next slide gives pressure drop in fin tube arrays, but uh, before doing that let me do one thing, I, I like to I like to give certain overview, so that you will be able to understand what we are going to do. So, let us say this is the tube array as I have told number of times that flow of fluid is through the tube and flow of gas or air which is the gas in many cases is in this direction. So, the length of the tube is normal to the, to the diagram I have shown. So, <coughs> uh, I have discussed the heat transfer aspect of it, let me discuss the pressure drop aspect of it. So, pressure drop aspect you see the when the air passes through this it will have different cross sections of area. So, when the air is passing through this portion, so it is passing through some sort of a restricted pace and when it is passing through this, then it has got more cross sectional area. So, air will go through <coughs> uh, experiencing or air will, air will experience some sort of acceleration and deceleration. So, this will give some amount of pressure drop plus of course, uh, it is uh, passing past solid bodies which are blob bodies and uh, these tubes are having fins etcetera. So, <coughs> there will be some sort of pressure lo loss due to that which is called friction loss, but it could be both uh, your friction loss and your uh, uh, loss due to form drag, <coughs> loss due to the presence of a blob body. So, all these thing generally it is uh, done in uh, some sort of a correlation form and uh, one can write delta p the pressure drop that is equal to <coughs> that is equal to due to two component k acceleration plus k friction. So, these two are coefficient and contribution from acceleration and friction as I have told and then half into rho v max square. 
square. So, this simple formula is used. So, all the complexity of the pressure drop that has been taken care of by this simple formula. Then how it is it has been taken care of? All the complexities have been clubbed into two coefficients. One is k a which is due to acceleration and another is k f which is quote unquote due to friction. So, as I have told that friction and form drag and uh, all these uh, losses due to uh, the viscous nature of the fluid that will be plugged into k f. And then k a is equal to 1 plus sigma square. Again I, I will get another relationship for k a. And then sigma what is the sigma? Sigma is some sort of a geometrical parameter. So, this is the uh, minimum flow area. Some of these things have been used earlier and divided by the total frontal area. So, from there I will get sigma. So, sigma is a geometrical parameter and then <coughs> I will get uh, k a and I will get also k f. k f is given by some sort of a correlation. Uh, with this uh, let us go back to our slide. Now, we will be able to understand what is there. So, sigma how I am calculating the sigma. So, uh, I have given some sort of a uh, tube array pitch etcetera have been described. So, we uh, uh, sigma comes from the geometrical uh, feature. So, sigma will be given by as you can see the <coughs> p 1 1 pitch will come d r root diameter of the uh, fin will come and then <coughs> this is the height of the fin, this is the width of the fin, this is the width of the fin and the space between two fins. So, all these things will come here. The value of k f depends not only on the geometry of the tube <coughs> uh, uh, tube array, but it also depends on other factor. So, k f is a function of Reynolds number based on maximum fluid velocity and tube diameter and is recommended for R e in the range of 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5. So, 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 <coughs> the R e and R e is defined or rather R e is uh, specified based on the bare tube diameter and the maximum velocity. It covers the range in which this fin tube heat exchangers are generally used. So, <coughs> the correlations what we will uh, be showing today though I have told that they need not be uh, I mean <coughs> memorized these correlations will hold good for most of the fin tube heat exchangers used in practice. So, k f now we can see k f k f is r e to the power some <coughs> factor then l by s then uh, the pitch that will come into picture and then the root diameter etcetera will come into picture. So, basically it is dependent on Reynolds number, diameter of the tube, diameter of the P, uh, fins etcetera. And then high fin tubes <coughs> in staggered array with R e in the range of 5 into uh, 10 to the power 2 to 5 into 10 to the power 4, we have got some other formula. A and A t I have defined in our earlier class. So, you see you have not to bother regarding the form, uh, formula because this formula are available. Unfortunately, if somebody uses some sort of a tube layout or some sort of a fin geometry for which formula is not there, then of course, it is, it is a matter to be worried and in that case one has to again conduct experiment to get this kind of correlations. Otherwise, if we pick our uh, uh, selection from the available um, uh, geometries which are used in the industry, then this kind of formula are available and one can just plug in. Only one has to know what is the logical procedure of designing, what is the logical procedure of analysis and that is what I am going to describe here. 
So, <coughs> as I have told delta p depends on k a and k f, k a depends on sigma. So, we have shown in this particular slide how to calculate sigma and we have also given some <coughs> probable correlations, uh, some existing correlations for k f. Now, let us move to the next slide. So, next slide <coughs> here I have shown A by A t is the ratio of the total surface area of the fin tube to the surface area of the equivalent Bayer tube. So, that is what and with this we can calculate the required quantities. Now, let us take up a problem and with the problem we will see how we can solve this and how we can use the things which we have learnt. A heat exchanger consists of 4 rows of 8 steel tubes, thermal conductivity of the steel tube that has been given and uh, in uh, equilateral triangular array uh, uh, fitted with fitted with corbels or dummy hub tubes to reduce the bypass flow. The tube have roll form rectangular cross section fin, rectangular cross section fin and the following dimensions. Uh, length has been given, root diameter has been given and then um, uh, the <coughs> uh, uh, then the tip diameter has been given then um, uh, actually <coughs> this first length one should take as the length of the tube and second L this is a typographical mistake over here. So, this is the length of the fin or height of the fin the w is the w is the width of the uh, fin and S is the uh, gap between two fins, then P 1 is the pitch <coughs> 1 pitch in the direction of flow and P 2 <coughs> sorry P 1 is the pitch normal to the flow direction and P 2 is the pitch uh, in the direction of flow. Let me explain L which is 0.5 meter that is the length of the tube. Uh, d r is the root diameter of the uh, base uh, uh, fin or the diameter of the tube <coughs> bare tube d t is the outer diameter of the fin. So, from here you can calculate using these two you can calculate the fin height. So, this is giving the fin height <coughs> this is giving the fin height and uh, this is giving the fin width w is small w is the fin width s is the gap between two fins and p 1 is the pitch you please consult our earlier diagram there you will get p 1. Uh, so, p 1 actually is a direction normal to the uh, direction of flow and p 2 is in the direction of flow. The tubes are heated uh, on the inside by condensing vapor that maintains a uniform tube wall surface temperature of 343 K and cooled on the outside by cross flow of air initially at 288 K flowing at the rate of 0.914 kg per second. What is the total rate of heat transfer and pressure drop across the heat exchanger? So, there are a few things which I like to <coughs> which I like to uh, mention. So, let us say this is this these tubes are uh, these tubes are <coughs> the tubes are arranged in equilateral triangular array. 
So, the tubes are arranged like this. So, this is basically if we join the center of the tubes then they are in equilateral triangular array and then you can know that this angle uh, this angle included angle will be 60 degree half of that angle will be 30 degree. So, this is how tubes are arranged. So, this is kind of a staggered arrangement. So, let us think of a staggered arrangement. So, this is the staggered arrangement. Uh, next row of column of tube comes like this. Now, you see <coughs> what happens that uh, uh, <coughs> what happens that here we are having uh, more number of tubes in the next column we are having less number of tubes. Let us say this is my control volume or this is the this is the envelope of the heat exchanger. So, what one can see that if the air passes through this then air will get larger uh, uh, vacant space. So, if air passes through this uh, let us say air is passing through this and here air will get larger vacant space. So, most of the air that will try to bypass through these portions. So, this problem will be there towards the end this problem will be there when there is staggered arrangement of tubes. So, what one can do here one can put half tubes which are dummy tubes. So, this is what one can put and then the air flow distribution will not be lopsided and uh, uh, we have selected um, the um, <coughs> staggered arrangement of tube and we will get a good distribution of air through the staggered arrangement of the tube. So, this is one thing which one has to <coughs> appreciate. So, you, you see here it is told that fitted with corbels or dummy half tubes. So, what is dummy half tube that I have explained. Then <coughs> the tube is heated from inside with the help of a condensing steam. So, if it is heated from the uh, inside by a condensing steam generally in condensation heat transfer coefficient is very high. So, what has been done in this problem that we have uh, neglected the resistance inside the tube due to condensation because that resistance is very small compared to the other resistance. So, this is also one thing you have to remember. Uh, and in many cases one can also neglect the resistance of the metallic tube because metal has got a high heat transfer uh, conductivity high conductivity and a uh, <coughs> low thermal resistance compared to the resistance offered by the gas which is outside the tube. So, basically then <coughs> the all the resistances are in series, but the resistance on the air side that becomes the deciding factor. Okay. And fluid properties have been give, given. So, uh, the air density has been given, air viscosity has been given and C p has been given k thermal conductivity of um, <coughs> air that has been given and then Prandtl number that has also been given. So, with this let us go to the next slide the surface area of fin that is A f we can calculate the surface area of the fin. Then surface area of the tubes between the fins that we can calculate by A w this have been explained earlier and I again like you to derive this relationship of your own. So, that you can understand this uh, uh, how they have how, how this formula have been uh, arrived at. And uh, what you can do uh, <coughs> you can also solve this problem of your own though it has been given. So, uh, taking this problem statement you can solve it. So, then the total surface area this is the outside surface area which is responsible for heat transfer, 
but again here I like to mention that this surface area is not equally effective in heat transfer. The bare tube surface outer surface that is more efficient or more effective whereas, the fin surface there are uh, there will be a variation of temperature. So, fin efficiency also we have to take into consideration. The uh, total tube surface area without uh, without the fins or fins removed is uh, we have got uh, uh, without uh, without the fins that is we, we will get uh, 8 point sorry 0.824 meter square. Then minimum cross section area of the flow uh, from where we will get V max, V max is needed in many calculation. So, we will get like this. Please recheck these numbers you can calculate and check with our number. For Reynolds number we will get this is our Reynolds number. Uh, <coughs> getting the V max we will get Reynolds number this is 1.61 and into 10 to the power 4 and you can note uh, all the correlations I have mentioned earlier. So, it falls within the range of those correlations. So, let us go to the next slide. Next slide the average heat transfer coefficient now can be calculated. Uh, <coughs> so, Nusselt number we can uh, calculate the average Nusselt number this kind of formula I have given earlier. So, this is your Nusselt number uh, and uh, <coughs> then there are two factors. Okay. So, these two factors how do we calculate these two factors uh, <coughs> correlation for uh, high fin tubes we have used correlation for high, tin, high fin tubes low fin tubes is this formula and high fin tubes is this formula. So, we have to decide which one we, uh, we can use and already we have given uh, this formula earlier. So, you are familiar what are the terminologies used in this formula. So, uh, then we have um, uh, selected the uh, actual relationship and then from there we have got the average Nusselt number from there we have got the heat transfer coefficient which is 127.3 watt per meter square Kelvin. Now, this value I mean one can uh, one um, does not have to get it by heart, but 100, 120, 100 uh, up to 150 uh, watt per meter square Kelvin that is the heat transfer coefficient for air in uh, forced convection at least this much one can uh, remember and this kind of uh, gut feeling of a number is very important when we, we are designing certain heat transfer equipment. Then fin efficiency has to be calculated. Uh, last day also I have shown how to calculate fin efficiency using the same formula we are getting the fin efficiency 0.89. This is also one thing that fin efficiency should be on the higher side. If the fin efficiency is not on the higher side, then we have not selected a fin properly, we have not selected a fin uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> justifiably. So, here we are getting almost 90 percent fin efficiency which is acceptable, sometimes even we go for lower fin efficiency and in case of some high end heat exchanger high effectiveness <coughs> uh, uh, heat exchanger we are having higher fin efficiency. So, with this we will move on. <coughs> so, as I have told once we have got the fin efficiency what we can do there are two ways either we can get some sort of reduced area by the use of fin, fin efficiency or we can get some sort of reduced heat transfer coefficient. So, here effective average heat transfer coefficient we have calculated and that is 115.8 uh, watt per meter square Kelvin. Then log mean temperature difference we have to calculate the log mean temperature difference. Here there is one catch please try to understand that the catch is this is a phase change heat transfer device where condensation is taking place and it is being cooled outside with air. So, air will uh, air will change its temperature or rather there will be a change in temperature of air. But from the problem statement, the 
condensing fluid. So, condensing fluid side there will not be any change in temperature, very high heat transfer coefficient on the condensing side. So, the tube wall will re remain at a constant temperature, this is e very important to understand. So, this is very important to understand that the tube wall will remain at a constant temperature and using that constant temperature which has been given in the problem, we can calculate the log mean temperature of the heat exchanger. Basically then this is a heat exchanger where one side temperature remains constant, other side temperature changes and then we will discuss about this kind of heat exchanger in details maybe from the next lecture onwards and then there is only one resistance because other thermal resistances are negligible compared to the air side resistance. The formula here which I have given delta T is equal to this complex uh, or not so complex uh, um, <coughs> expression. Uh, this has come through a number of steps. I would request all of you already you are familiar with LMTD, already you are familiar with uh, the how to do the uh, temperature variation uh, estimation. So, please try to get this expression. So, once you get this expression then it is very easy delta T is 45.6 K. What is this delta T? This is the delta T experienced by air which is passing outside the condenser coil. So, now your Q dot is equal to H A delta T that is this is the this amount of heat transfer. So, total amount of heat transfer we are getting from this formula alright. So, <coughs> basically what we have calculated we have calculated a few uh, areas from there uh, uh, we have also calculated the Reynolds number and uh, the, uh, the heat transfer coefficient and using those values what we have done, we have calculated the total rate of heat transfer. Well, now we have to calculate the <coughs> pressure drop. The ratio of minimum free flow area to total frontal area that is sigma at the beginning of the lecture I have described, so that is 0.3139. The half rho V max square that is needed for pressure calculation uh, <coughs> V max we have calculated, so this is what we can get. K A acceleration coefficient I have defined as A plus sigma square and then I can get it as 1 plus sorry 1.15. So, obviously you can understand as it is 1 plus something which is a positive quantity it will be more than 1 and it depends on sigma. Then K f, K f calculation is not straight forward, uh, it depends on what kind of correlation we pick up. So, we picked up a correlation suitable for this based on Reynolds number and the geometrical parameter. So, we have calculated K f. Then delta P is equal to K A this K A plus K F this this is your K F <coughs> 4 into K F y we have to see how many rows are there. So, that is why this 4 or number of rows we have to give. So, that is what we have given and then uh, half rho m v max sorry half rho uh, v max square. So, that is half rho v max square 128.3. So, that has also come and giving everything it is 414 Newton meter square Newton per meter square. So, this is what is the pressure drop across the uh, fin tube heat exchanger. So, <coughs> In a not cell, what we have done? We have first uh, uh, first described. We have first described the the method of pressure drop calculation in a 
fin tube row and column where there are number of fin tubes and then uh, we have taken up a problem which is a fin <coughs> tube uh, condenser outside air is flowing for that we have calculated the overall heat transfer uh, total heat transfer rather and then we have calculated the pressure drop. So, this should give you some idea that how to do calculation for a fin tube heat exchanger. So, with this we will uh, we will uh, try to uh, make some sort of a conclusion that uh, that we have started with uh, <coughs> with <coughs> augmentation of heat transfer and then we um, defined also what are compact heat exchangers. I have told that um, fins are very uh, useful method for augmenting heat transfer and they are very extensively used in heat exchangers. So, that is why we have spent some time on fin tube heat exchanger different methods of specifications calculation etcetera I have described. And finally, we have taken up a problem where we could calculate the total amount of heat transfer and the pressure drop. So, there are many such problems uh, and the books which I have described I mean which we have given referred as reference. So, those books also you can see and uh, if any queries are there uh, you are welcome to put up those queries. But it is important that whatever I have given the derivation those derivation you check those are very simple geometrical derivation and sometimes it is derivation from LMTD. So, please do the, this derivation of your own. Thank you.